What's going on guys? I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually going to be tier ranking every single post credit scene from the Marvel Cinematic Universe slash MCU so far. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many there are. It will be in the video title. I'll look it up. I'll even put it right here in the video. But I know that Guardians 2 has 5, which is just obnoxious straight up. But before I give you guys my ranking, definitely hit that like button. Comment down below your ranking of all the Marvel post credit scenes. What are your favorite and what are your least favorite? I'm curious to hear. But the tiers I have today are fantastic, great, good, meh, and bad. And the first scene that comes up here is from Captain America Civil War, the second post credit scene where Spider-Man is fidgeting around with a little gadget and the Spider-Man logo pops up on the roof. Now, if I had to put this one in a category, I'd probably go good, middle of the road. Not bad. It's nice showing that we've got a new Spider-Man and it's setting up the future of Spidey and he's just embracing who he is and seeing that logo, it just gives a lot of hope to audience members, including myself, uh, that we've got a new Spider-Man who's here to stay. Um, the next one is going to be the last post credit scene. There's two for this movie. The second one from Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is literally 10 seconds long. It's just an ant playing the drums or rock band. I'm going to go ahead and put that in bad and move on because no one really cares about that. The next one is going to be from Avengers, uh, the second post credit scene in that movie. And that is when the entire crew is eating shawarma. I think this one... <sighs> You know, it's the Avengers. You want something epic, and you get that in the first post credit scene. This one, it's a little more heartfelt. It's kind of, it's a nice little moment, and they hint at shawarma throughout the most of the movie. So because of that, I'll go meh. I'll go meh. Now, meh is not terrible by any means, but I can't put this one in good. It's just, it's a, it's a heartfelt, funny little moment. It's not much to it. The coolest thing about this scene is there's a moment where Chris Evans is kind of sitting like this, covering up his face, because he actually had to grow a beard for the movie Snowpiercer, which I haven't seen. I got to watch it. But he grew a beard for that and he didn't want to shave it, so he's kind of like this. And I think they actually put a prosthetic arm and up on him so that his whole entire face was covered. Next, we've got the post credit scene for Avengers Infinity War, where Nick Fury gets dusted and uh, Maria Hill gets dusted. And there's a little pager on the ground with the Captain Marvel logo that pops up. I got pretty excited in the theater. I remember someone in my theater yelled out Captain Marvel. Yes, they're like, Captain Marvel. I like this one. I'll go... Oof. I have to put my, my thoughts for Captain Marvel to the side for this because I don't love the movie. At the time though, I liked the moment a lot, so I'll go good. I'll go good with this post credit scene. Um, definitely set up the next movie, Captain Marvel, and it was the first hint of that movie that we even got. So for that reason, it goes in good. The next one is gonna be from Guardians 2, one of the five, which is just obnoxious, by the way. It's when, what's his name? Kraglin, is that his name? Kraglin. The guy, Sean Gunn, J James Gunn's brother, plays this character. And I think he starts playing with Yondu's like whistle. Eh, it's fine. We'll go mad at best. Honestly, you know what? We're going bad. It's just not that funny. The next one is actually featuring Bucky, if Cam wants to join. <laughs> so the next one is from Black Panther, the last credit post credit scene where uh, Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, his Black Panther, he says, uh, the white wolf. Where would you put it? And then I'm going to put it where I think I did you go. I would put it in good. <laughs> in good? Yeah. I would put it in good too. Period. I thought you were going fantastic. Well, listen, if we're going off of how he looks, fantastic. But his shoulder looks pretty nice in that picture. There's not much. <laughs> it, see it if we got some conversation. It's exciting that we know that he's coming back from Infinity War. That's and what it does. It's nice yeah. to know that he's happy and healthy. Yeah. Can talk to Shuri. Yeah. If you got a haircut, my gosh, it'd be a 10 out of 10 scene. <laughs> so the next one is actually the first post credit scene from Black Panther. Now, this scene's fine. It's actually where I think they announced Wakanda to the world and that Wakanda is going to be like helping out kind of like a outreach or something, I believe. Um, I'll go mad. I think that it's uplifting and very inspiring, but at the same time, there's just better post credit scenes. I think the one, the second one in Black Panther uh, is, is significantly better. Next, we've got the Captain Marvel post credit scene, which shows Captain Marvel pull up on the Avengers. This is going in great. We've got the first great one. And the reason I say that is one, Captain Marvel from that scene alone was already a better character than she was in the entirety of her own movie. I agree. And we saw Black Widow, we saw Cap, and we even saw, I think, War Machine and maybe Hulk. Interestingly enough, when I saw Endgame, until after the movie, I didn't realize this. This post credit scene sets up why Captain Marvel was going to pick up Tony. I feel so stupid talking about it right now. Next is going to be Thor The Dark World, the second one that I don't remember at all. It's a picture of Jane and, and Thor kissing, and I don't recall this at all. So we're going to put it in bad just like the movie. Next is gonna be the post credit scene from Iron Man 2, which is a dope one. It's actually gonna go in great. It's when Coulson is in, I think, New Mexico. And you, the camera pans up and there's this massive crater and you see Thor's hammer. I was in the theater with my grandparents at the time and my brother. 
And this was just hype for me. I was like, yes, we're getting Thor. Next, we've got the post credit scene for Captain America, the first Avenger, which is essentially a tidbit of a scene from Avengers. A little like trailer actually plays for Avengers. I'm gonna go with great, just because it got me so pumped for the Avengers at the time. Um, granted, looking back on it now, it's just a scene from Avengers, so it's nothing special. Next, we've got the second, the second uh, post credit scene from Captain Marvel, which is Goose puking up the Tesseract, or eating it and puking it up, I forget exactly what, puking it up, I think, yeah. I'm going meh, yeah, it's fine. It's funny, it got, it got a little chuckle out of me, but nothing special compared to some of the other scenes. Uh, next is gonna be another one from Guardians 2, I think it's one of the actual ones from Guardians 2, though, uh, where I believe they hint at Adam Warlock, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna go with good just because of the stakes and that character is huge in Marvel comics and Marvel properties I believe so the fact that they're hinting at it possibly showing up down the road in the MCU is monumental And because of that I'm gonna go with good next. We've got Guardians 1. Oh, man I have to put this one in great and I don't even care It's literally just because it's such a cute moment of Groot dancing as he's kind of coming back to life in the pot and want you back by Jackson 5 is playing and Drax keeps looking over and Groot pauses every time. It's such a cute moment that I have to put it in great. Another post credit scene from Guardians 2. This is the one where you see Sylvester Stallone's crew uh, possibly assembling. They could appear in another Guardians movie. It's cool that they've got like almost an all-star cast for that, but at the same time, like, do I care? Not really. I'll go meh. Then we've got another uh, Guardians 1 post credit scene, and that is going to be the Howard the Duck scene where you see him at the very end of the movie in the collector's room. This one, you know, a lot of people laugh at it. They're like, oh, it's Howard the Duck. To me, I'm like, eh, it's cool. It's cool that they acknowledge Howard the Duck is canon in the MCU. But I'm going meh. I'm going meh with this one. It's, it's better than the ones in bad. That's the way I'm justifying it, but still. It's just Howard the Duck, and it's funny, but nothing... There's no weight to it. The ones that really hit home with me are the ones that set the stakes up for future movies. Next, we've got one of my personal favorites in the highlight of the actual movie, The Incredible Hulk, the post credit scene. I'm going to go ahead and out of personal bias for the character, I'm putting this in fantastic. General Ross is sitting there drinking the Incredible Hulk drink at the bar, and then the door opens and you see this majestic light and you don't know who it is, and then it's Tony Stark. And uh, he's talking to him, he's like, I'm getting a team together. And then he has this little grin. It's, the, the early ones just hit different because, again, they set up the Avengers, and at the time, that was the biggest thing in movies, this first big crossover. Now, Endgame makes it look like nothing, but still, I have nostalgia for the scene, so I gotta put it in fantastic. Plus, rest in peace to a legend, Tony Stark, the man. Next up, we've got the post credit scene for Ant-Man and the Wasp, the actually good one, directly right after the events of the Thanos snap, as Scott is in the quantum realm, and then we see he's stuck there. He's trying to, he's trying to reach out through the radio. It's just dead white noise. And then we see Janet Van Dyne, uh, Hank Pym, and Hope Van Dyne all got dusted. So Scott's stuck there, heading into Endgame. We don't know how he's going to get out. Turns out a rat would save him, and that's never bothered me, by the way. It's kind of a funny meme. This one, I got to go great. Like, I remember it was the craziest moment in that movie. Because that movie essentially is like a step down breather from Infinity War. And then the post credit scene is just bonkers. It's like, oh my gosh. I didn't expect them all to get dusted. I thought that someone would get dusted, but all of them leaving Scott alone, wild. We've got the, the post credit scene from Spider-Man Homecoming where Vulture's in prison. And then he has a little confrontation with Scorpion, which I think both characters undoubtedly will come back in the MCU, possibly Spider-Man 3, possibly a Sinister Six movie. But I really enjoy this one. It's where uh, Vulture's like... Um, what did he say? He's like, uh, if I knew, if I knew who he was, he'd be dead or something like that. It shows that Vulture is hiding Peter's identity, setting up something. I feel like P he has a vendetta against him now because he ruined his life. So I think that Vulture, we already saw in the Morbius trailer. It's going to be wild when he does come back. And Scorpion too, my gosh. I'm going great with that one. It's a really, really solid Spider-Man post credit scene. Next up, we have the post credit scene from Doctor Strange. I forget if there's two. I really do, but we're gonna just, I think there's only one. So I'm editing right now, and I totally forgot to mention the Doctor Strange post credit scene where Thor shows up and he's drinking the beer. It would go in the good tier, so hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It's Carl Mordo, played by Chiwetel Ejiofor. Excuse me if I pronounce his name wrong. Benjamin Bratt's character essentially gets paralyzed again, and Carl Mordo says he's trying to take out all the ma magicians. That's basically what happens, so if he's not in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, something's wrong. I hate when post credit scenes don't play off or pay out in the end, like they never show up again. So I'm gonna go with the... Meh. I'll go with meh just because it is, while it is setting up stakes, um, we haven't seen those stakes yet, so until we get to see this character again, it will remain in meh. And next, I actually have a duplicate, so just ignore that. We'll put it at the bottom there. That's the same exact uh, scene from Incredible Hulk. Now we're on to one of the best in the MCU, and that is the first post-credit scene from Avengers as we see Thanos for the first time. 
Now, it's not the final product, the final look of Thanos, but still, this establishes that the big baddie in the MCU is here. Uh, because of that, I gotta go with uh, Fantastic, easily. One of the best. First look at Thanos, and you just know it's gonna it's going down. I think they actually announced that Infinity War was gonna happen like later that year or two years later, but still, Thanos, big old baddie of the MCU got introduced, so I gotta go Fantastic there. Next, we've got Iron Man 3, where it, it's revealed that Tony is basically telling his story to Bruce Banner, like the whole entire Iron Man 3 movie, kind of in a therapy session, and Bruce was sleeping the whole time. Uh, this one was a little of a letdown, because Iron Man 3 at the time let me down so much, I was like holding on to so much hope we were gonna get this awesome end credit scene, and then I looked at my friends in the theater and I was like, that's it? Like, I wanted Hulk, like I wanted to see something cool, but hey, we got Hulk, but just not Hulk Hulk. So I'm going with meh for this one. It's just like, it's all right. It's not, Hulk's not really one of my favorite characters anyway. So I was a little disappointed by this one, no lie. Next, we've got Ant-Man, the first of two from Ant-Man, and that is the first one. Hank Pym actually shows Hope the wasp suit. This one is going in good. I like this one quite a bit because I actually think uh, Hope is one of my favorite females in the MCU. And favorite, I agree. Yeah, one of my favorite females. I agree. She's so slept on. Ponytail Hope. Is that Endgame? Uh, she has a ponytail like Ant-Man and the Wasp. She's oh, okay. So good. So yeah. Good. Everyone forgets about her. One time someone told me that they thought that I, like, the MCU character that I reminded them most of was Hope, and I, this is the biggest compliment ever. Yeah. We, I mean, we need more Hope cosplays. Is there a Hope cosplay out there? Yes. Should do it. The next one's also from Ant-Man. Cam's joining for it. It's when we see Bucky kind of beaten down, and Cap and Sam Wilson slash Falcon are talking, and then uh, they're talking about their options. We don't really know what's going on. And then uh, Falcon's like, I think I know a guy. Talking about Ant-Man. So we get a little hint of Bucky. This one, I have to say, goes in good. Yeah. It's a, re it's a really good scene and it sets up Civil War and that's how Ant-Man's gonna show up in Civil War. So you gotta love it. I like their team. Next up, we have the OG post credit scene. Many people's favorite. The first ever look at Nick Fury and Iron Man as Tony's in his house and he sees Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury. You already know it's going in fantastic because it's the first glance at the father of the Avengers, essentially, Nick Fury, who assembled this team. So I have to go fantastic with that. Samuel L. Jackson, you're a god. And if you come back to play Mace Windu, I will love you forever. Yeah, because he's watching the video. <laughs> he is. Uh, next, we've got the first post credit scene from Thor The Dark World where the Collector actually is given the Reality Stone, which is the stupidest thing ever. I don't know why you would give him the Reality Stone. I guess they didn't know that he already had the Power Stone, but whatever. Um, it was cool to see this, and it kind of sets up Guardians as they go to the Collector's place in that movie. Uh, I'll go with good for this one. I think it's a pretty awesome scene. So next, we've got the post credit scene from Winter Soldier, the first of two, where Baron Von Strucker is shown, and then you get your first ever look at uh, Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, the twins. This one's got to go and oh, I think it's got to go in the highest of highs. Fantastic. Cam's giving me the approval. Um, these two characters now, especially, especially Wanda with WandaVision, like she's growing on me more and more each day. Uh, I used to say she wasn't the most powerful Avenger. She is. Period. She is. We easily. Easily. Yeah. First look at Wanda and Pietro. Next, we've got the end credit scene from Ragnarok, which sets up the opening of Infinity War. Dare I say... Dare I say fantastic, it's going up there, why not? So we actually see like Loki and Thor in their own ship and then they look up and the shadow of Thanos' ship is just massive and it's, it literally makes the ship that everyone from Ragnarok is on look like this and my head is the size of Thanos' ship. It's crazy and it lets us know Thanos isn't here to play, folks, and it sets up Infinity War beautifully. So the next two are Bucky related, so I gotta bring in the Bucky expert. If you couldn't tell, she's a Bucky fan. We've got the post second post credit scene from Falcon and... I must have Falcon Winter Soldier. No, I do that all the time. From the Winter Soldier, the movie, uh, where Bucky is at the Smithsonian, I think. It's just the Captain America exhibit. Okay, And yeah. he's in it because he's Captain America. And, just and at the very end, it kind of zooms in on his face, and I think it plays the Winter Soldier the theme. The theme is yeah. the best part. <laughs> See, listen, if this was... I'm Bucky, going great. Wow! Yeah, it's a great... I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's not the best... It's not fantastic, but it's a really great scene because it, it shows that he's broken and that he is going to, like... He's, he's trying like, to come to terms with who he is. It's well, like it reminds me a lot of Jason Bourne. Yeah. Well, he's remembering. He's so I'm going. I'm going great. Wow. Do you approve of that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I thought I was gonna have to do some <laughs> persuasion. Yeah. The next one is from Civil War. It's where Bucky is put under. I'm tempted to go fantastic because it's so nice that they finally put him away because he was such a threat. Take it back. No, he needed to go under. He 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 acknowledged. He I know, but under. you don't have to say it like that. I don't know. That movie, don't I mean, whew, don't get me started. But <laughs> I'm going good with this scene. I think that uh, it shows that, you know, Bucky is going to be away for a while. And we get our first look at Wakanda. So I think it's a good scene, but I can't say great, personally. You fine with that? 
It's your tier list. I'm going good. He looks so good in that scene, though. He's in the color white, which is significant to yeah. the fact that he's not a bad person anymore because he's always dressed in black. So the next one is from Spider-Man Far From Home, and that is where Talos is revealed to have been Nick Fury the entirety of the movie. And then we see Nick Fury in space. And he looks like he's on a beach, but he's in space. So Nick Fury was never in this movie. It was actually Talos, uh, the scrolls. And I say this one is good. Um, at the, It's a good one. I don't think it's great, but it's good. I think that it's crazy that it, that, that is where we are in the MCU now. Uh, is that setting up S.W.O.R.D.? Is it setting up? Who knows what it's setting up? Nick Fury is in space with other scrolls, and Nick Fury was never in the movie, which make, draws a lot of questions. Who's really in the MCU? Who is there and who is not at this point? Because there's scrolls at play. So it's crazy. Who knows what's going to happen? But... Uh, Maybe in WandaVision, there's some scrolls work going on. Who knows? Next, we've got the final post credit scene from Spider-Man Homecoming where Cap talks about patience. Now, I don't have patience, so this scene tried my patience. I'm going to go with the fact that it's pretty funny. I will go good. I cannot go higher than good, but I think that it, it works because it's a play off of the gym teacher videos earlier. So I'll go good for that reason. Next, we've got another one that should have never existed from Guardians 2 where we literally see Groot playing and he has a messy room and then Star-Lord comes and yells at him. I'm going bad. Just disrespectful that they even wasted our time as audience members. <laughs> I like the Guardians, don't get me wrong, but that scene is so stupid. Ne Teenage Groot is the worst version of Groot. Next, we've got perhaps the greatest post credit scene. It's the Avengers Age of Ultron one where Thanos picks up the gauntlet and says, fine, I'll do it myself. Fantastic, you already know. Sets up the fact that he is not here to play, folks. I mean, I've said that every time we talk about Thanos. He's not here to mess around and he will do what it takes. He's taking matters into his own hands. He's got the gauntlet. All he needs is a stone, so gotta be hyped for that one. Next, we've got my favorite. I think I, this is easily my favorite post credit scene. It's the most pivotal so far, and that is the post credit scene for Spider-Man Far From Home, the first one where Mysterio is reveals Peter Parker's identity to the entire world, and we see J. Jonah Jameson played by J.K. Simmons. That right there was like, oh my gosh, this is icing on the cake, but then we find out Peter Parker's identity is revealed, and he goes, what the f and then it cuts. That sets up Spider-Man 3 in the future DMCU to perfection because we don't know where on God's green earth this character is going now. He's wanted, I'm assuming. He's going to be on the run. Like, who knows exactly what's going to go down? Everyone in the world knows who Peter Parker is, Spider-Man. So, absolutely wild. It's, it's going in fantastic. I think it's the best of the best. And I hope that each post credit scene continues to have stakes like that going forward. Next, we've got the final post credit scene from Thor Ragnarok where the Grand Master gets beat up by all the junkie, the trash collector people. Uh, we'll go with Matt. It's kind of funny, but eh, not nothing too special, but it's not bad. It was just like, eh, okay. It's cool to see what happened with the character at the end of the movie, but no need for it really. Next, we've got the post credit scene from Thor, the first Thor, where we see uh, Nick Fury and Dr. Eric Selvage. It shows that Loki's going to play with minds and kind of control people in Avengers. That's what it sets up. I'll go with, I'll go, I'll, what the hell was that? It was a, it was a goose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll go good with this scene. We got interrupted by a literal goose outside the window. You have to put that in. I will. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I'm going good with this scene. Like, it's cool to see what Loki's powers are. And the last one I'm talking about today. By the way, I feel like I'm definitely forgetting some, so let me know if I forgot any down below. We're almost at the 30 minute mark. This is going to be like an episode of television for you guys. So, the last one I'm talking about here is going to be Stan Lee's appearance in Guardians 2, the fifth. And final post credit scene from this movie where it's revealed that Stan Lee is a watcher. So that's how it's possible for him to show up in all these different roles in all the different MCU movies. I think that I read somewhere this was like a fan theory or something. So they put it in and it's pretty cool. It's nice to know that they like acknowledge that Stan Lee exists in the universe. It's just, it's awesome to see. They actually acknowledge how it's possible for him to be in all these different roles. So I think it's a sweet one. And I'll go with great for that reason. It's, it's the best of the Guardians 2 post credit scenes probably. And it's a nice little nod to Stan Lee because he is, he's a legend. Rest in peace. So that's going to do it for my ranking of every single Marvel Cinematic Universe post credit scene. If I forgot any, let me know down below. I feel like I did. Um, sometimes the images don't all load. So if I forgot any, I'll either pin the comment or you guys can let me know down below. But what is your ranking of all the scenes? Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree? What's your favorite and least favorite? I'd love to hear all that and more down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It will mean the world. This is going to be a long video, so I hope you had your snack ready. Um, but I'm excited for more WandaVision. That's why I did this video as the MCU is in full force. We've got a great MCU year ahead of us. I can't wait, uh, especially for Falcon Winter Soldier. I know Cam's excited for that. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more content. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any videos. And until next time, see you guys later.
You have anything you want to say? Meow into the camera. Uh-huh. Meow. No? <laughs> That's good enough. He licked. Are you camera shy?